The Victron Smart Solar MPPT, or the Maximum Power Point Tracker, maximizes the energy taken from the solar panels and stores it in the batteries. Although it doesn't have a display of its own, it sends information to Android devices or Apple devices via Bluetooth. It connects to the solar panels by MC4 connectors and connects to the batteries via the bus bars with a standard lug. If you want to see how I installed the original system with the solar arch, then check out this blog, DIY Budget Solar Installation. But bear in mind the installation changed slightly when I installed the lithium batteries, which you can see in this blog, Lithium Battery Install. So I've just been putting the finishing touches to the battery bank. I've put the protector plates over the bus bars and the fuses, uh, tightening up some cables. So on the solar side, I've taken the 40 amp inline fuse off and uh, replaced it with a 50 amp circuit breaker. So these are Battleborn's recommended configuration settings for the Victron Smart Controller for my particular bank which is a 24 volt 400 amp hour bank. There's a preset dial on the bottom of the MPPT controller uh, and setting 7 is for lithium. So you can find the MPPT controller from the device list in the Victron Connect app. You may get a firmware notification update in which case just uh, type in the code 000000 uh, to open the settings and confirm that firmware update. For some reason I was asked to do this twice, I'm not sure why, but it worked fine so moving on. Click on the gear icon in the top right hand corner to take you to the settings. So once you've opened the app and you've gone to the settings, set the battery voltage to the voltage of your system and in my case it's 24 volt. The maximum charge of my MPPT controller is 50 amps, so that's easy enough. Then it gets a little confusing because if you've set the preset dial to 7, which is lithium, or LifePo 4 Battleborns as I've got, it doesn't exactly match up with the Battleborn LifePo 4 recommendations or configurations on the Battleborn website. So on this occasion, I went with the, the Battleborn configuration settings by going to uh, user-defined settings rather than the preset lithium settings. So absorption rate was 28.8 and the float voltage was 27.0 volts. This might seem a bit counterintuitive having the absorption rate higher than the float voltage but I think these terms are a leftover from the old lead acid days and the charge curve doesn't exactly match up with lithium. So everything else is disabled or left to the default settings. Just bear in mind that once you have done these settings don't forget to save them by clicking on the floppy disk icon at the top and saving those settings. If you want to know more details on these settings then go to the Victron website which has them all categorized individually. Of all the upgrades we've done, I think solar combined with the lithium batteries has been the biggest game changer on the boat for us. It's taken away all of that energy anxiety and battery management stress that we had with the lead acid batteries. I've got to say though, having lived with lead acid batteries or AGM batteries for so long, we have learned to be very energy conscious. 
So even though we feel quite energy decadent now with the lithiums, we still live on way less energy than the average shore-based family, almost completely reliant on renewable energy now. That's it, thanks for watching and see you next time. Those are supposed to be knockouts, okay? On the other side of the knockout is these reinforcement bits of plastic. So you try and drill out those knockouts because they don't knock out and then that happens. Who designs these things? So thanks for watching and thanks especially to our patrons who make all of this possible. These blogs are created on a very tight budget so if you'd like to support us you can follow the links to Patreon or PayPal in the description below. Or buy a t-shirt or even click on one of the adverts. Every little helps.